This is Iraq propaganda. Who tell that? The West, this is the truth. You visit the hospital and we see what happened to the Iraqi children. I tell you, this is the truth. This is the crime of the United States. It is a hot political issue. We have heard and we have some evidences that they've used it in Kosovo. So if this weapon continue to be used by the military establishments of the West or whoever owns it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's dangerous. And uh, I put it at the rate of a crime against the humanity. Iraq, once a fabled land of caliphs and kings, is today a country under economic siege. International sanctions were imposed on Iraq after it invaded Kuwait in 1990. The stagnant economy leaves many Iraqis with nothing to do but reminisce of better days. Yet another, possibly more sinister legacy from the Gulf War is worrying the people. Iraq claims that Allied bombs dropped during the Gulf War have contaminated the country and exposed its population to a catastrophic health risk. In particular, bombs containing a heavy metal called depleted uranium. American and British forces fired over a million rounds containing depleted uranium, a substance both radioactive and chemically toxic. On this road, thousands of Iraqi troops were killed fleeing Kuwait. The bombs used are arguably behind the continuing death rate among Iraq's Gulf War veterans. At the time of the withdrawal, we were under heavy bombing in a convoy of tanks and trucks with a lot of equipment. I was driving with my unit. The shelling was fierce, and I began to smell a very bad smell, a strange smell, something like bad eggs and uh, rotten garlic. Men such as 27-year-old Omran Abdul Ali are dying slow and agonizing deaths from cancer, which they believe is a result of being irradiated by depleted uranium. Two of my friends have the same symptoms and same swellings. I think that they have been cured. From 1997 till now, I've been taking various medication. I've had injections and I've taken pills. I can't see any progress. Day by day, the swelling is getting bigger. At night, I can't sleep and I feel I'm suffocating. It's strangling me between the left and the right. Depleted uranium is used in military ordnance because it has a greater density than lead, making it an ideal armor-piercing weapon. More recently, it was used by American forces in the Kosovo crisis. The depleted uranium round comprises what's called a scarab, which effectively is a big dart with a lump on the end and a couple of guide veins like that. This is about, depends on the type of round that's fired, the ordnance of fire, between 150 millimetres to about 300 millimetres. Weighs several kilograms. And the cone, this is the DU here, usually this bit is as well, to give it extra mass. The cone is usually covered, depending again on the manufacturer, with a cadmium plating to make sure it penetrates the actual tank side. What happens is this. What it does is, is it gets to, well, here's the wall itself here. As it approaches the tank wall, of course, it penetrates in, and then the towel flicks off, usually. This section breaks. So it's this bulbous part that goes into the tank, and, of course, as it goes into the tank wall, here's the tank wall here, it literally seals itself in. It's travelling through here, 
about a thousand miles an hour, say, it's getting very hot, but no oxygen can get to it. When it comes out the other side, it's absolutely incandescently hot, and of course it immediately bursts into flames and creates all these particles. And the amount of energy, although it's quite high, the amount of energy here just gives you a puff of very high temperature. So what's interesting is that it doesn't detonate all the munitions in the tank. It's just enough energy to actually incinerate any diesel fuel in the tank, burn any dry skin. So it's a pretty hideous weapon in terms of what it does. It's a flash, bang, sort of toaster. Iraq was once known as the ancient land of Mesopotamia, a Sumerian name meaning land between two rivers. For thousands of years, the waters of the Euphrates and the Tigris have provided a fertile land for the people. But now this ancient land has been polluted. Depleted uranium dust particles can be carried airborne and are easily inhaled. The particles can lodge in the body's organs, causing cancer as well as damage to the body's cell structure. The radioactive half-life of depleted uranium is over 4,000 million years. There are also fears that depleted uranium from bomb fragments may be seeping into the water table of Iraq, polluting the agricultural soils and even entering the food chain. At the maternity hospital in Basra in southern Iraq, doctors are convinced that depleted uranium is behind the cases of cancers and deformities they are seeing. By the wind, this depleted uranium is exposure to distant parts to ever all over, you cover all over the society. So we, I tell you, even the earth, even the food, even the water is contaminated. What happened in the future to our self, I didn't know. We also maybe develop malignancy. I didn't know, because everything in our society is contaminated with this depleted uranium. In another hospital in Basra, 13-year-old Ala Mohammed lies dying of cancer. Dr. Jawad Ali is a cancer specialist who has seen a four-fold increase in cancer cases, particularly among the young. We got uh, abnormal pattern of cancer. Uh, a cancer of elderly patients seen in younger age group, a cancer of the ovary which is seen in uh, 30s or 40s of age in female. I saw a case uh, in a patient who is just 11 years old. Leukemias and lymphomas and cancer of the, of the ovary and testis is increasing after uh, the use of this depleted uranium. Alaa was four years old at the time of the Gulf War. Just half an hour after filming, Alaa died. Jism Mohammed is about to have a baby. Tomorrow she will undergo a caesarean section. It will be her third caesarean operation and her fifth deformed baby. I've had four babies with the same condition, with big heads, full of water, and I don't know why they have it. I feel confused and I don't know what to do. We'll see what they bring out of me. I don't know what I can do. I'm very scared. In fact, I'm petrified. Dr. Abdul Karim will perform the operation. He believes depleted uranium is not only destroying the lives of Iraqi civilians today, but is also harming the life to come. I noticed an increasing, rising incidence of these congenital malformations in babies. In the last, particularly in the last uh, four, uh, four or five years, with, with a bizarre uh, pictures, we didn't see it in the in the atlas of, uh, of congenital malformation, which is a, a universal atlas for congenital malformation. We think, or we thought, that the depleted uranium may be the cause. 
The danger posed to Iraq by depleted uranium has been taken up by Sami Araji, who is campaigning on behalf of the Iraqi government to raise awareness on the use of depleted uranium. By the year 93, 94, we had a lot of data on what took place uh, specifically on uh, congenital diseases. And we presented all the findings in the first Iraqi conference on the usage of DU on the south of Iraq. Uh, by that time, we had a lot of data. We had known that has been used extensively on the south of Iraq as well as on areas of Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. Jism Mohammed arrives at the hospital on the day of her operation. Jism's previous babies were born with a condition known as hydrocephaly, or water in the head. They all died shortly after birth. Jism knows that this baby has the same condition. The baby boy is alive, but clearly has a larger than normal head. The feeling of the mother, because I am mother, the mother is ten, nine months pregnant with all the effort of pregnancy, and then the products of her pregnant is abnormal baby. What happened to the mother? What the feeling of the mother? Just an hour after the operation, Jism is back in her ward. Due to restricted medical supplies, she is given no painkillers to ease her agony. She hasn't been shown her baby yet. Like other deformed babies, Jism's newborn child will probably be neglected and die very soon. The view that such babies are deformed and dying because of depleted uranium is not shared by the authorities in the West. In tests on its own soldiers, the Ministry of Defense in Britain rejected the possible harm of depleted uranium. Any radiation from possible exposures are extremely unlikely to be a contributory factor to the illnesses currently being experienced by some Gulf War veterans. The hazard from depleted uranium is an extremely small risk of lung cancer and the possibility of transient kidney damage if it's ingested or inhaled. I believe that we at the NRPB have studied the risks from depleted uranium more than adequately. This has also been looked at by other organizations and so far there is no convincing evidence that uranium represents a hazard to people. The studies done on Hiroshima and Nagasaki survivors, studies done on other groups, cohort groups that have had radiation exposure, Chernobyl for example, quite clearly, and it's established and acknowledged by the International Commission on Radiological Protection, which is the authority on this, that there will not only be a problem with living exposures, humans are exposed, say, in their adulthood and childhood, but also in the second generation, so one can get genetic defects carrying over. So in other words, the first population that's exposed uh, will likely show a, a higher incidence of cancers and leukemias. And the second and third generations, and successive generations, are also likely to show genetic damage that will manifest themselves as some form of congenital birth defect, cancers, etc. Iraq's own interests were dealt a blow by this man. Wafiq Samurai was head of Iraq's military intelligence before defecting to the West in 1994. He comes from a village close to Saddam's and has personally known Saddam for over 40 years. As former military intelligence chief, Samurai provides a unique and revealing insight into the inner workings of Saddam's regime. Uh, 
It is clear the Iraqi government is using the issue of depleted uranium for political reasons instead of caring for Iraqi people. The regime wants to say that the use of uranium has caused a lot of death and illness. So, as I said, the regime uses uranium for political purposes and propaganda. Depleted uranium clearly has a political value for Saddam. He is using it to arouse international indignation against the West's treatment of Iraq. In this way, Saddam hopes to get the sanctions lifted, allowing him to sell his oil and so rebuild his economy and his army. But there may be other causes for the cancers and deformities which Saddam is trying to pin on depleted uranium. The whole of Iraq is polluted land, probably the result of the use of chemical weapons in the first Gulf War against Iran and the use of chemical weapons against the Kurds and also the bombing of industrial factories. As a result, Iraq is clearly a polluted area. But in Iraq, it is very difficult to uncover the truth. Government minders are always present when filming. This government minder, unaware he was being caught on camera, objected to the filming of a pile of rubbish in the stream. To register his disapproval, he took the tripod and walked away, bringing an end to the filming. Ensuring the press reports what Iraq wants to be reported is an important part in Iraq's efforts to lift sanctions. It is in the hospitals where the full force of sanctions seems most immediately obvious. Iraq claims around 6,000 children under five are dying each month from malnutrition. We move the economic section from our society to help our children to prevent this devastating problem. The economic section become devastating for our children, for all people in Iraq. We lose every day hundred, hundred regarding children, old men, old women, and we lose many patients because of economic section. So I want to hang the Clinton. This is a crime. This is a crime. In the Kurdish north of Iraq, an area beyond Saddam's control, malnutrition has dropped due to the implementation of United Nations food programs. In the rest of Iraq, Saddam has refused the UN a role in distributing food directly to the Iraqi people seeing this as an affront to his authority. Instead, his regime acts as a middleman. Malnutrition remains as high as 26%. Why the persistence on using this ugly weapon of boycott against the Iraqi people? Why? Is it fair? Is it just? I don't think so. I think it's, it's an act of, uh, an act of uh, destruction what else? We haven't attacked anybody, okay? And if we entered into a war in Kuwait, we, well, we, it's finished. It's been 10 years now. Why do, you, why do you run after us all this period of time? Saddam's problem is that he feels he is strong. He feels he is more powerful than anyone else. This is a wrong way of thinking. It leads you into making wrong decisions and misreading the situation. 
The high-stakes debate over whether depleted uranium is responsible for cancers and deformities is intensifying, particularly in light of its use in the Kosovo crisis. It would be a sad and shameful irony if it turns out that the West, which accuses Saddam Hussein of amassing weapons of mass destruction, is itself guilty of using radioactive and chemically toxic weapons. We can no longer tolerate, with this sophistication of weaponry, no longer tolerate the military planners, the targeters, having an entirely free hand to do something which may, okay, it may control a so-called tyrant for a few years, but certainly we wouldn't want to see the effects going on for many decades. And that may be what we're seeing now in Iraq, and it may be what we will see in Serbia by the use, the unconstrained and unrestrained use of high technology weapons.